Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the Comms Prepper with a video today about FRS and GMRS radios. To help clarify some confusion here, FRS and GMRS or Family Radio Service and General Mobile Radio Service are two radio services as designated by the Federal Communications Commission. These two services share common frequencies. So what vendors have done is they've packaged and sold walkie-talkies and radios labeled both FRS and GMRS in the same radio. So if you go to Walmart or buy a radio online with the walkie-talkie and it says FRS and GMRS, it's a radio of containing two radio services in the eyes of the FCC but each radio service has different restrictions but they have common frequencies which allows the vendors to package both service frequencies into one radio unit so we're going to try to explain a little bit how that impacts and why it's important to preppers my bottom line up front is knowing your equipment can be the difference between life and death the packaging of these radios can be misleading and sometimes confusing and knowing the specifications of the equipment you're looking at can help, help you match it to your operational requirements. The first radio service we'll talk about is the Family Radio Service, or FRS. This radio service was pretty much created back in 1996, and what they did is they designated 14 channels within the General Mobile Radio Service to be used by FRS users. And this created a new service where a radio license wasn't required for individuals to have an FM type walkie talkie radio. The specifications for FRS radios, there's 14 channels, again the 14 channels are shared with the general mobile radio service. Their power is limited to 500 milliwatts or a half a watt. The channels are narrow band, 25 kilohertz, meaning they take up less radio spectrum in the deviation. They're frequency modulated, amplifiers are not permitted, external or removable antennas are not permitted, repeaters are not permitted, and no external telephone connections are permitted. Here's a list of the 14 FRS designated frequencies. And now we'll talk about the general mobile radio service. Uh, major rule changes took place in 1988 for GMRS which opened up GRMS radio use to individuals on, in addition to businesses. However, the difference here is a license is required to operate the general mobile radio service. The specifications for GRMS is a license is required. There's 23 channels. Seven of those are shared with FRS radios. The power is limited to 5 watts. However, I found that all the radios I've looked at online and in catalogs only go up to 1.5 watts, which is a key point for preppers to understand. If you think you're buying a GAMRS radio because the FCC says they can be 5 watts, the radio you're buying may not actually put out 5 watts. What the rules say is they can't exceed 5 watts, but most of the radios, or all the radios I've found online, don't go above 1.5 watts. GRMS radios are wideband radios that have 25 kilohertz of DV bandwidth or deviation so they'll have greater fidelity and clarity on the fringe areas of their coverage. Repeaters are permitted on specific channels. Certain channels are limited when near Canada in what the FCC calls line A and line C. Line A runs along the lower 48, line C runs down the Alaska border, and external antennas are permitted with GMRS radios. Here's a list of the frequencies assigned to the General Mobile Radio Service. You'll notice I have seven frequencies here, bold-faced and underlined. That's because these are the frequencies that are used in common with the FRS Radio Service. And this is why they can bundle two radio services in the one box and sell it to you as a consumer. And then their manual will specify which channels are FRS channels and which channels are GRMS channels and they'll put a, a caveat in there saying make sure you have the FCC license before you operate on the GMRS channels and this is how they do it because they're really the same frequencies just 
when it's designated FRS in the radio, they change the deviation to 12 and a half kilohertz because it's narrow band, and they cut the power back to a half a watt. Not all radios are the same. So here's some cutouts from manuals of different radios that I found on the internet. Uh, one of these uh, list of frequencies goes out to seven, 17 channels, where the other list goes out to 22 channels. Up top here, there's uh, talks about transmit power, and this is the critical piece that I think preppers need to be aware of. This manual doesn't specify how much power. It just says high or low, and I find that to be misleading. Am I getting the full 5 watts or not? Uh, I looked at some Motorola manuals today for their FRS, GMRS products, and they'll actually specify in those manuals a half a watt on the FRS designated channels and 1.5 watts on the GMRS channels. But again, I could never find a radio that went up to 5 watts in GMRS or have an external or removable antenna to use an external antenna. I encourage all preppers to look at the specifications of the radios they're about to buy. Here's a spec section I cut out of a manual for a radio claiming to be a 36 mile radio. And it talked about high and low power. And when I looked here at the specifications, it only lists a half a watt. So is half a watt the high, highest power? It doesn't say. So again, if you're looking at a radio and they don't specify what the power is, don't buy the radio. Or if you're thinking about buying a radio before you commit to it, download that service manual or operator's manual and see if they specify the power output. Because again, this is your preps. If you're looking, if you're willing to spend the extra money to buy the GMRS license to get the extra power to increase your range, you want to make sure the radio you're buying is actually providing you that power to get that range. So, the comms prepper recommendations when looking at these walkie-talkie radios is one, know your requirements. If you need to talk between the first and the second floor of your house, then a half a watt in FRS channels will work. But if you got to talk down the street or across town, you might need a GMRS radio that actually specifies that in the GMRS mode or on a GMRS channel, they're giving you a bump up in power from a half a watt to a watt and a half. Don't believe the packaging. It, it, when they say 36 miles, 20 miles, 50 miles, that means nothing. If they really meant it, they'd put 1 watt, 2 watt, 3 watt, 4 watt, 5 watt. If you have different vendors and models of radios, when you're putting together your communications plan for your preps, take out the manuals and look at the actual frequency specification page. And make sure that when you're programming your radios up, that channel let's say 14 on one radio actually matches the frequency and the service of channel 14 on the other radio because like I showed you earlier one radio went up to 17 channels and the other radio went up to 22 channels so you could have two radios that could talk together but the quality would be off because one was on an FRS designated channel at 12 and a half kilohertz bandwidth and the other radio was on a GMRS channel shared with FRS on 25 kilohertz of bandwidth. And the, the GMRS radio was putting out a watt and a half, and the FRS radio couldn't understand why you couldn't talk back, because there's a difference. But they had some communications because the frequencies were uncommon. So you definitely want to compare your frequencies in the listed in the manuals when you're using different radios from different vendors, and even different models within the same vendor. If you're operating GRMRS, go ahead and get the license. Again, when selecting equipment, look for the power specifications. Make sure you're getting what you think you're getting. If you really think you need 5 watts, you can also go to a Motorola type shop and purchase a LAN mobile radio product or UHF business band radio and ask them to program it for the GMRS channels with all the limitations associated at 5 watts with the bandwidth matching and putting in the 23 channels and then you know you have the full 5 watts out. Uh, and those are my recommendations when you're considering buying or using these FRS slash GMRS commercial walkie-talkies. As always, thank you for watching my videos.
This has been the Cons Prepper.